Let's turn our let's turn our attention to the peripheral nervous system. The peripheral nervous system includes all structures outside the brain and spinal cord that include sensory receptors, peripheral nerves and their associated ganglia, and efferent motor endings. The peripheral nervous system contains a variety of sensory receptors. As you recall, a receptor is a structure that is sensitive to one or a set of specific stimuli. Peripheral nervous system receptors can be classified in three non-exclusive categories. By the type of stimulus they detect, their location in the body, or the relative complexity of their structure. For instance, mechanoreceptors generate nerve impulses when they are deformed by mechanical forces such as touch, pressure, vibration, and stretch. Thermoreceptors are sensitive to temperature changes. Photoreceptors, such as those of the retina of the eye, respond to light energy. Chemoreceptors respond to chemicals in solution. Nociceptors respond to potentially damaging stimuli that result in pain. It should be noted, however, that overstimulation of any receptor is painful, and therefore all receptors are a type of nociceptor. Exteroreceptors are sensitive to stimuli arising outside the body. They include touch, pressure, pain, and temperature receptors in the skin. Interoceptors, also called visceroreceptors, respond to stimuli arising from within the body from the internal viscera and blood vessels. They include chemical changes, stretching of tissues, and temperature. Proprioceptors also respond to internal stimuli but are restricted in their location in the musculoskeletal system. They occur in muscles, tendons, ligaments, joints, and connective tissue. Simple receptors are equivalent structurally to modified dendritic endings of sensory neurons. They are found in the skin, mucous membranes, muscles, and connective tissue, and monitor most types of general sensory information. Complex receptors are actually sense organs, localized collections of cells working together to accomplish a specific receptive process. Complex receptors are associated with the special senses, such as vision, hearing, smell, and taste. So a nerve is a cord-like organ that is part of the peripheral nervous system. Every nerve consists of parallel bundles of peripheral axons enclosed by successive wrappings of connective tissue. Within a nerve, each axon is surrounded by a delicate layer of loose connective tissue called endoneurium. Groups of fibers are bound into bundles or fascicles by a coarser connective tissue wrapping called the perineurium. All the fascicles are enclosed by a tough fibrous sheath, the epineurium, to form a nerve. The autonomic nervous system orchestrates the relative stability of our internal environment. It is comprised of motor neurons that innervate smooth muscle, cardiac muscle, and glands. The motor neurons of the autonomic nervous system alter heart and respiratory rates, adjust blood pressure and body temperature, increase or decrease stomach and other digestive secretions, and control pupillary reactions. 
Another name for the autonomic nervous system is the involuntary nervous system or the general visceral motor system. The autonomic and somatic systems differ in their effectors, their efferent pathways, their target organ responses to neurotransmitters, their axonal anatomy, and their neurotransmitters. In the somatic system, the axons of motor neurons extend from the central nervous system directly to their effectors. These axons are typically heavily myelinated. Somatic motor neurons release acetylcholine and the effect is always stimulatory. In the autonomic nervous system, axons, known as preganglionic, run from the central nervous system and synapse in a peripheral autonomic ganglia known as the postganglionic neuron. Preganglionic axons are lightly myelinated and postganglionic axons are unmyelinated. Preganglionic fibers release acetylcholine. Postganglionic neurons run from the ganglion to the effectors. Most postganglionic fibers release norepinephrine. Autonomic effects are stimulatory or inhibitory depending on the postganglionic neurotransmitter and the receptor types on the effectors. The autonomic nervous system is subdivided into two divisions, the parasympathetic and sympathetic divisions. Generally, both divisions serve visceral organs, but cause essentially opposite effects. If one division stimulates smooth muscle to contract or a gland to secrete, the other division inhibits that action. This process is called dual innovation. The two divisions counterbalance each other's activities to keep the body running smoothly. The parasympathetic division is also known as the craniosacral division because its fibers arise from the brain stem and the sacral region of the spinal cord. The parasympathetic division mediates routine metabolic activities and allows us to unwind as it performs maintenance activities and conserves body energy. The parasympathetic division is most active in non-stressful situations. It is sometimes called the resting and digesting system. The parasympathetic division is chiefly concerned with keeping body energy use as low as possible, even as it directs housekeeping activities like digestion and elimination. Neurons of the parasympathetic division release acetylcholine. Their fibers are referred to as cholinergic. The sympathetic division is also called the thoracolumbar division because it originates from cell bodies of preganglionic neurons located in the spinal cord segments T1 through L2. The sympathetic division is often referred to as the fight or flight system. It is most active when we are excited or find ourselves in emergency or threatening situations. Its activity is evidenced by a pounding heart rate, sweaty skin, rapid breathing, and dilated pupils. All sympathetic preganglionic fibers release acetylcholine. Most postganglionic fibers release norepinephrine. Postganglionic fibers serving sweat glands and some blood vessels of skeletal muscles release acetylcholine. 